What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Donny Graham Builds. In this week's episode, we are tackling drawer boxes. That's right, we're gonna throw, show you three different ways to build a drawer box. In this case, this is going into my workbench slash assembly table. That'll be a separate video, but be sure to keep a lookout for that and subscribe if you wanna see it. It'll come with plans. It's gonna have a ton of functionality. But right now, we're gonna focus on drawer boxes. In this case, we're gonna use three quarter inch material and half inch drawer slides. These are soft close ball bearing drawer slides. They mount on the side of the drawers. They're pretty nice. You don't have to do soft close, but the price difference is just worth having the fancy soft close and no smash fingers for kiddos, which is important for me because I've got two little ones. So like I said, we'll throw, show you three different ways. It's really not that hard. Stick around and we'll walk you through each one. Let's get to work. And of course, the first step in any drawer box construction is figuring out the space in which you're trying to add drawer boxes to. Get the length, get the depth, get the height. The height will determine A, how many boxes you can put in there and what size those boxes can be. Now, once I have those, I keep a dry erase board on hand where I can draw out the opening, draw out the measurements that I just took. That way I have a quick reference for all the different measurements that I need and that really helps to avoid errant cuts during the process. Now, like I said in the beginning, these are half inch drawer slides, which means you need a total of an inch off of your opening to allow for those drawer slides to fit in there. After adding that inch, you also need to figure out how deep your boxes are gonna be. So we have 20 inches to play here. I like to leave myself a little bit of extra space, so we're gonna use 18 inch drawer slides. With 31 inches of room, we're gonna do three drawer boxes at six inches and two at five inches. That should leave us plenty of room for spacing. Now you also have to account for the sides of your drawers, three quarter inch plywood, we need two sides, which will be an inch and a half. That brings us down to 32 and a 16. Now let's plug those numbers into our actual drawer box and figure out what size measurements we need for each piece. Okay, with all of our measurements figured out, we're ready to start breaking down material. Now, I'm using my table saw because I have one. So I'm ripping to length and I'm cross-cutting all my pieces to width. If you don't have a table saw, don't be intimidated. You can totally do the same thing using a regular circular saw with either an edge guide or any kind of edge running jig. I'll throw a couple links down below to a few that I've used that I like. Now, another part I like to do with my drawer boxes is recess the bottom panel inside the drawer box up. So what I do is set my fence to a quarter inch from the blade and set the blade at a quarter inch high, run every single piece through once, and then knock my fence over just a little bit and run all the pieces through again. That gives me an eighth inch blade times an eighth inch, or plus an eighth inch blade, gives you a quarter inch slot, which is great for our quarter inch base panel. Okay, so we've got our grooves cut. They fit what's going to be our base, which is just quarter inch plywood. They fit those perfectly. Off camera, I went ahead and rounded over both sides of our drawer boxes, just because you'll be going over those a lot as you reach in and out of the drawers. And it's nice to have a nice round over edge so you don't get scratched or splintered or anything like that. I don't do the front and back because you don't really touch those edges ever. So with that said, we can start on our first method of pulling these drawers together. We will take the front and back, which are the bigger pieces in our case, put them in our pocket hole jig and drill pocket holes. Now. This is a pocket hole jig. This is the K4 from Craig. I'll throw a link to this below. Very functional, very quick, a little spendy. If you don't have one of these and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, this is the K3, I think. It comes in a little kit with the drill bits and the stop call it that you need. I'll throw a link to this below as well. Very quick, clamp it down, drill the holes on the side and then attach it to, or excuse me, drill the holes on the front and back and then attach it to the side. And that'll prevent us from seeing the plywood edges on either side. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'll show you right now. Now, one quick tip here, be sure to double check how you're orienting your board when you're about to drill your pocket holes. The groove for your bottom panel should be facing away from you if you're using this type of jig. That way your pocket holes are on the outside of the drawer box, not the inside of the drawer box. Make sure you mark this, that way you don't make the mistake, it'd be an awful headache to have to go back and make pieces again. Now that we've got our pocket holes drilled, we can find out the size of our bottom panel. Take the total depth and the total width and then subtract uh, probably a hair over a half inch. And so we have quarter inch depth on either side, a hair over a half inch should give you just enough room to get the panel in there without too much difficulty. Now, like I said, my bottom panel is going to be quarter inch plywood. I'm not sure what kind of plywood this is. It's got crazy grain on it. It just happened to be the cheapest stuff at my local box store. 
Uh, so I went with it. All right, so we got our bottom, drawer bottoms cut. We got our drawer sides cut. We are ready for assembly, which is where we're gonna talk about our three different methods. As we talked about before, there's the pocket hole jig. That'll take pocket holes, drill the front and back into the sides, hide your plywood wood edges, and just give you a clean look. Very, very secure, very strong. The second option is gonna be just glue and brad nails. Now you don't need an air gun per se. You could use one of the battery powered ones. I've done that before. I used to have a battery powered Ryobi and it would get the job done as well. And the third option is gonna be just plain old screws. Now I will say you need to pre-drill and countersink these screws. Otherwise you're gonna get splitting because this is plywood and there's not a lot of room to dig in. So with that said, let's take a look at these. And while I'm fuddling around with these drawer sides, uh, it's a great time to throw out there. If you're enjoying this content, if you feel like you're gaining something from this, I would love it if you would like and subscribe to the channel. I release videos like this about every other week or so, and I would love to have you guys along for the ride. And with our first box out of the way, we can move on to our second method, which is gonna be the glue and brad nails. Now, I don't think I actually use glue here because I'm using pre-finished plywood. If you have pre-finished, uh, just sand it off a little bit. I just didn't care to. Uh, if you don't, definitely throw in some glue. It can't hurt. When you're driving your brad nails though, this is important. Make sure that you're driving it to where it is in line with your back panel. That is to say that the brad nailer is perpendicular. That way when the nail goes down and it veers, it'll veer left or right instead of up or down and it won't split out the end of your plywood. And that's one more drawer box down. Now our third method is gonna be just straight screws. As I mentioned before, you definitely wanna countersink. I like to mark the boards 3 8 of an inch in, which is half of 3 quarter inches, which is the size of our plywood. Countersink, drive the first screw, and then go back and drill and drive the second two screws. That way I've just got an anchoring point and I'm not trying to hold it still while pre-drilling each hole. Do this on all four sides and you're good to go. This is really sturdy, but obviously you lose the concealed fact. You see exposed screws. For shop furniture, not a really big deal, but if you're doing a nicer piece, definitely go with one of the other options so you don't see these exposed. Now, it doesn't do a lot of good to show you how to make the drawer box without showing you how to install the slide. So if you slide all the way out, there's this little black tab and then you can separate the two pieces to a male and a female portion. With those two components separated, I like to mark the center of the side of my drawer box and then take the male component, flush it up with the front of the drawer box and line it up with the center line and the holes on the component itself. Then using a self-centering drill bit, I'll pre-drill those holes. This is a super handy tool to have. I'll link this one below, it's pretty inexpensive. And then I'll drive the screws home. These screws come with every drawer slide, so don't worry about the sizing. Once that's installed, I take it up to the space, hold it in place with the spacer at the top and mark the center of that drawer slide. I also want these to be recessed three quarters of an inch for the face frame, so I mark three quarters of an inch back. And then they make jigs where you can hold your slide in place, but I found just a clamp and a carpenter square that's like seven bucks, does this just fine. I line up the center of the female portion with the mark we made from the center of the male portion we held the drawer up, pre-drill, and then attach these one at a time. Once both female portions of the drawer slide are installed, take the drawer box itself, line up the female and male portion, slide it home, and the first little slide in is gonna be a little tough. Just push it all the way in, and once you get past that first little click, it'll slide nice and smoothly with that soft close. After that, guys, it's just rinse and repeat. Uh, one quick note here, typically I would not work from the top down. Uh, in this case, though, this is my garage floor and it's uneven, so working from the bottom up would have just made all my drawers kind of cattywampus. So working from the top down and referencing the level surface of my workbench top made it a lot easier for my case to keep my drawers level. Typically, again, you'd want to go bottom up and just cut a plywood spacer to sit your drawer box or your drawer slides on as you install them. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's build. Again, three super simple, super easy ways to build drawer boxes. It's kind of a beginner skill, but once you have it down, it really opens a lot of options for your work, whether that's shop furniture like this or even custom pieces. Now, like I said at the top of the video, this is a part of my whole new workbench slash outfeed assembly table. I'll have a video coming out on that in about a week or so, so be sure to click that subscribe button if you want to check it out. It will come with plans, and it's going to have a ton of functionality. That'll do it for this week's video. Until next time, get out there and get to work.